The LA Clippers have the first pick. They are on the clock right now with 1.41 to go. Let's check in with Doc Rivers, who's in Los Angeles. Always a great thing when you win the lottery, you got the number one pick. <laughs> but it presents some problems, does it not, Doc? Yeah, they do have some decisions to make. They need a point, they need a five. They have Ike Austin, and they don't know if they can sign him. That's why they're going to go with Ola Candy. I, don't, I think they're going with Ola Candy not only because of Ike Austin and knowing that they can sign him, they just think that he has a great upside and he'll be a great basketball player someday. Things changed a lot out there. The talk for weeks and weeks was that Mike Bibby would be their number one pick. What swayed him toward the big fella? I think they like his upside potential. They look at Bibby and they say he could be a solid point guard, maybe good. They don't know if he could be great. They think the upside of Ola Wakandi is that he could be a great center someday. It's a gamble because there's a downside to him also. And what would that be? Uh, if he doesn't pan out. And in inexperience, how, how much <laughs> of a project is he? <laughs> exactly. Well, he is a project. He's only played the game for two years. Uh, but he's 7-1. You can't teach height. Worst case scenario, you have a guy who is 7-1 with a 7-8 wings brand and who, a guy who can run the floor. That's not a bad problem. Now let us see what uh, the L.A. Clippers have decided to do as we go to Commissioner David Stern as the Clippers are ready with the first pick in the 98 draft. With the first pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Michael Oluwakandi from University of Pacific. Michael Oluwakandi, you talk about the inexperience factor, you talk about where this kid came out of nowhere. Here's his situation. The son of a Nigerian diplomat living in London, seven feet tall, a great athlete trying to decide, hey, I'd like to kind of tinker with this basketball thing picks up a guide to U.S. colleges, looks at the letter P, University of the Pacific, I'll call them. He calls, an assistant coach answers, and he said, I'd like to play basketball, I'm seven feet tall. Coach says, we don't have any scholarships. Is it not a problem? I'll pay my own way. He comes over and the coach figures, he said, well, you know, if, if he's seven feet tall and he can't play, it's all right, we got a seven foot student on campus. If he can play, we got a big thing going on here. It's happened for Michael Olawa Candy, the candy man as they call him. What a story, Hubie. The fact that he's such a great athlete. You know, they say that in Great Britain, he still holds a national high school broad jump and hop step and jump records. And he runs the 40 in 4-5. He bench presses 350. So he has nothing but an upside, Ernie. Well, Michael, EJ obviously has traced your path to Pacific. John Thompson doesn't believe you can just show up on campus and be a superstar. Coach Thompson's right. I'll check your stats. You only averaged four points that first year. What was the big uh, realization about this game of basketball for you? Ernie, it was much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, growing up in England, I thought if you could run and, and jump and dunk the ball, that's what you needed to be a basketball player. But coming here, learning the game from scratch, learning the fundamentals of the game, getting a better feel for the game, playing at a very high level, that took a while. It took the best part of a, of a whole season. And after that, after my physical capabilities kind of took over from there. Gibby Brown mentioned obviously the long jump and triple jump records. How does that and your soccer background help your footwork? I think that helps a lot. I mean, when I came, my, foot, my footwork wasn't that good, but my, my balance was. And I just had to learn on my footwork in the basketball context. But like I said before, the biggest part of my game was getting more of an experience for the game, getting better feel for the game. And after that happened, things were kind of smooth from there on. Congratulations. Now we'll see if LA is big enough for the Shaq and also for the Candyman. With the second pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Vancouver Grizzlies select Mike Bibby from the University of Arizona. I look to my left and I see a kid with a sign that says Bibby for Prime Minister. There is at least one, and there it is, who wanted this thing to happen. And he's gotten his wish, the number two pick in the NBA draft. Your thoughts on Henry's son, Mike Bibby, and what he'll bring to the NBA? Well, the one thing that I think about when I look at Bibby, now you and Rick will agree to you. Look at guards and you have to figure out what they are. When you look at Henry Bibby, you know doggone well he's a point guard. And I think that's the greatest thing about him is because he can have a ball and shoot the ball. He can stretch the defense with his shot. He doesn't have blow by speed. He's a touch slow and doesn't quite get it to the rim. But he can really extend you and he's got great post presence relative to the feed. He can feed the post. 
and he can pass in transition and he can draw and kick it just outside of the paint. With the third pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select Rafe LaFrenz from the University of Kansas. You need a power forward, you take a power forward. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Rafe LaFrenz goes number three here in the first round. What kind of a pro will he be, guys? I, I, I like him like to Adam Keith. I think he's going to give you everything he's got every night. He's going to run the floor with determination. He's got nice hands. He's got to find something he hangs his hat on. There's not one aspect of his game that you can point to as a glaring deficient deficiency, but conversely, there's no dominant strength to his game. There's nothing that jumps out at you. He's got to develop into, I think, a, a rebounder extraordinaire. The other thing is that opportunity is there. He has an opportunity to develop because he's going to a team that needs his help. As Yubi indicated, he's a big body, he's big size. They picked exactly what Yubi said. With the fourth pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select Antoine Jameson from the University of North Carolina. And certainly nothing personal there when you heard a few boos ringing down. Remember, we are in Vancouver, and this was Toronto on the clock, and Antoine Jameson, the number four pick in the 1998 NBA draft. And there was, there was some talk, guys, about him being a tweener and some doubts about where he was going to play, who's going to take him. What are your thoughts on the player of the year in college hoop? I think sometimes we get too smart for our own good. I've never had that happen to I, me. I think, I, I think that there's some players that we attempt to say he can face the basket, he can, he's a forward, he's a guard, a center. This kid is a player with a big heart that's played in a great program who I think will eventually be a great pro. Outstanding rebounder. He rebounds his own shot better than anyone I've seen in the game in the last 10 years. He has a nice jump hook to his left shoulder, really runs the floor. I mean, he was the best runner of the floor that I have seen the entire collegiate season. And I think he's gonna develop a nice offensive game on the perimeter because he's such a hard worker. And he's a willing learner. I, I really feel it. Also, he's a tough kid. He can hit, play through a hit and get the three-pointer the old-fashioned way. He's going to go the line. With the fifth pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Vince Carter from the University of North Carolina. So for the third time, North Carolina has two players picked in the top five in the NBA draft. Anton Jameson and Vince Carter going back to back here in round one with picks four and five. First team all ACC. Shade under 16 points a game which was number 11 in the conference. Shot 59 percent. That was number one in the ACC. And when we talk about positions here guys again where does he fit in? Is he a, is he a two? Is he a three? What is he? You know what he is? He's a talent. <laughs> and, and, and what he is doing at all of these workouts is he is shocking people with his range. Now, he shot threes at a 40% clip, and yet no one talks about that during his career at North Carolina. And yet, what he is doing in some of these workouts, he's opening up the NBA eye because he's making the NBA three. No one discounts the fact that he can post up and also he can take it off the dribble to the hole and he's a great athlete. Two Tar Heels have been taken in the first round. Antoine Jamison, <coughs> Vince Carter, the first time I think you've been separated. I saw you guys shopping together at the pre-draft camp doing the fan jam together. Tell me about this guy's game. Uh, he's he's going to be a, a tremendous player in the NBA. He's going to be one of those guys whose name is going to be in the NBA for a long time and you know I was very proud and very fortunate to have him on my team for three years and it's going to be hard getting used to playing against him now. So, uh, you know, we're going to continue to be friends throughout our NBA career and beyond that. Well, Vince, obviously, he was the college player of the year, but you both have great futures. What can you tell me about Antoine's game? Well, he's, a, he's always a pleasure to play with, and uh, he makes you better. Um, he plays hard, and, he, and when you see him play hard, it makes you want to play hard. And he's really going to do a great job in the NBA, and I, I know that, and he's going to be a surprise to everyone. You've been smiling all week, but just a second ago, you're sitting there with a stone face. Peter Vesey announced you may be traded. Is it suddenly an unsettling and an anxiety moment for you? I've been waiting a long time for this moment, and still it's uncertain. So, uh, you know, I'm ready to know for sure exactly where I'm going to be at. And, uh, you know, just to hear my name called was something special. I've been waiting for that moment a long time. But, like I said, it's still a lot of uncertainty where I'm going to be at. And, 
I'm just ready for sure to know exactly where I'm going to be at. Toronto has traded the rights to Antoine Jameson to Golden State for the rights to Vince Carter plus cash consideration. Now, moving right along, <laughs> with the sixth pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Robert Trailer from the University of Michigan. Well, we'll talk about the trade in just a couple of minutes, but this moment belongs to Robert Tractor Trailer. Taken number six here in the first round by the Dallas Mavericks, a guy who had, at times has really tipped the scales, but to his credit has really worked to get himself into playable shape. Well, he has been a eye-opening surprise around the NBA league tryouts. Everyone is talking about the soft hands. He's in the best shape that he's ever been in. He's down to 280 pounds from over 300. He is a, a guy who can rebound. He can also score. And you have to look at this pick and say that they're not maybe worrying about filling a need, but what they are doing is picking the best player and not worrying about duplication at positions because you have A.C. Green and Samaki Walker and the kid Ansi at that position. Robert Tractor Trailer makes his way to the stage here in Vancouver. With the seventh pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Jason Williams from the University of Florida. With the eighth pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Larry Hughes from St. Louis University. So Larry Hughes, all of 19 years old, won't be 20 until January. A lottery pick by the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, you look at this guy's game, he's six foot five legit, and he's going to be able to play two positions because everyone likes the way he handles the basketball. He averaged over 20 a game. He's the freshman of the year in Division I college basketball. He did score over 20 a game, but he's not a high percentage shooter at this time in his career. He only shot 41% from the field. But everyone is saying he can get to the point and get the shot off. And at the NBA, that's critical. Can you get the shot off with the clock going down? They say in the future, the shot will come. Here you got to look at Justin Hughes, who is Larry's brother. Justin at a very young age, having to undergo a heart transplant. Able to be here tonight at the draft to see his big brother selected as a lottery pick by the Philadelphia 76ers. One of the reasons that, in fact, the reason that Larry Hughes stayed close to home, played at St. Louis to be near his brother Justin. And he enjoys the walk now to meet the commissioner as a first round selection here in Vancouver. With the ninth pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Dirk Nowitzki from Würzburg, Germany. With the 10th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Boston Celtics select Paul Pierce from the University of Kansas. Paul Pierce sitting in the green room back there a little longer than a lot of folks thought he would be. But he is picked now number 10 by the Boston Celtics. Anytime that you look at Celtic basketball, they do not play a seven or eight man rotation. They're rotating a minimum of 10 guys per quarter. They're looking at high energy and they're always trying to find guys who can put the ball in the basket. Shooting makes up for a multitude of sins and you have to remember that and this young man can do it. He can stick the ball in the basket and the way that the Celtics play, he can give you two positions, small forward and two guard. When you're young and playing pressing basketball, you're always looking for guys who can give you two positions. Is he, is he one more than the other at this point, Hubie? No, I don't think so. I mean, I know at Kansas he played three. A lot of people said the Boston Celtics wanted to move up in the draft. They never thought a Paul Pierce would be available at 10. They're ecstatic in Boston. What were your thoughts as you dropped from two to 10? 
Well, it's a little disappointment, but, uh, you know, that's the way things go. And, you know, I just got to move on and use motivation. Don't make it a disappointment because this is a great scenario for you. And they're happy to have you. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I think Boston is a great situation. Uh, a lot of good players around him, Antoine Walker, Ron Mercer. Uh, with me there, Kenny Anderson, I feel like, you know, this is a playoff team and, you know, we, we can really build. Magic Johnson has been tooting your horn all along. What have you learned working out with Magic out of UCLA? Uh, you know, you learn so much from one of the greatest players of all time. Uh, you know, he, he's out there playing with us, showing us little things, you know, to help us along the way. And, uh, you know, he's, I'm using him as a tool right now just to help me get better. With the 11th pick in the 1998 sure. NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select Bonzi Wells from Ball State University. Bonzi Wells, the Mid-American Conference Player of the Year with nearly 23 points a game. He was number eight in the nation. Also led the country in steals with better than three a game. What's not the like when you have this guy? Not only steals, but deflections as well. This guy has active hands. And I'll tell you what, if you watch the Chicago Bulls, they're world champs and best defenders because they play not only with their feet, but with their hands. This guy's got lift and bounce. He's going to be a extraordinary in the open floor because he's going to be able to take it in transition and make plays to the hoop as well as passes. His shooting is a bit of a question, but he's going to be the kind of guy who gets to the rim and gets to the foul line. He's going to find a lot of foul shots available to him. He's going to have a post-up presence uh, a lot like Brian Russell with the Jazz. I think this guy is going to be a, be a steal here in, the, in, in terms of his athletic ability. Uh, we're looking at his father there. <laughs> I think he's got a great body size for the game, too. I think his strength and his ability to do things off of the dribble. I With the 12th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Michael Doliak from the University of Utah. Smile and a hug from Mama. Smile on the face of Rick Majerus, too. His player, Michael Doliak, taken number 12 by the Orlando Magic. This is a great moment for you, Coach. I'm really happy. When we took him, he did not have a scholarship. We were the only school to offer him a scholarship out of high school in November <laughs> of his senior year. That's and great. I'll, I'll tell you what, he sat on the bench his junior in high school. Has he come a long way? What a great kid. There's a lot of better players in this draft, but I don't think there's a better kid. He just turned 21 five days ago. What I like about him is, is what you said on the show last night, Rick, and that is, is that he has a Lambeer range. And he can play a center or a power forward position. He can block out, but he can play the perimeter on screen and roll stuff, shoot, shoot downtown, and in an 80% foul shooter. So you know the guy's a worker and he can get it done for you. Best shooting big man in the draft, and I'll tell you what, too, he'll lay out with a screen. He'll give his body up and he'll rebound his area. He's not going to get out of rebound, uh, out of area rebounds. He doesn't have lift, he doesn't have bounce. And he's a plotter running the floor, but he's a willing runner. He'll run as fast as he can. It's not real fast, but he'll give it to you. With the 13th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Keon Clark from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. With the 14th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Houston Rockets select Michael Dickerson from the University of Arizona. <clears throat> With the 15th pick in the 1998 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Matt Harpring from Georgia Tech. With the 16th pick in the 1998 NBA Draft, the Houston Rockets select Bryce Drew from Valparaiso University. With the 17th pick in the 1998 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Radislav Nestedovic from Ljubljana, Slovenia. So for the second year in a row, the Minnesota Timberwolves go with a center in the first round, Paul Grant, one year ago. Nesterovic is the pick this time around. He is 7'1 and 250 pounds. Yeah, what the, you got to remember now, this fellow was the starting center for Kinder Bologna that won the Italian championship and then the European championship. Now, some scouts say he's one or two years away, but also there's a question mark. Will he have to abide by the contract that supposedly he has for next year in Italy? That will be questionable. Now, when you look at Minnesota, remember they just released Stanley Roberts, the center, and also Cherokee Parks, the other center, is a free agent. 
So what they're trying to do here is to protect themselves. There's a starting center on the best team in Europe, as Hubie says. He's played with Sasha Danilovic. With the 18th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Houston Rockets select Mirsad Tershan from Efes Pilsen, Turkey. Not in the green room, but certainly in attendance, and there to get the hat, Mirsad Turchan. And he makes his way toward Commissioner David Stern. Now, this young guy, Ernie, at six foot nine out of Turkey, is an offensive force in FIBA basketball. He only is at 225. He's probably a play a power forward position. And once again, you know, all the European guys who are coming over without attending colleges in the United States. With the 19th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Pat Garrity from the University of Notre Dame. So for 6'9", Pat Garrity, the weight ends as he is selected by the Milwaukee Bucks. John Thompson? I like him. I, I think his versatility offensively is what, you know, is so impressive. He reminds me of somewhat of a version of Christian Leitner. Maybe not some of the attributes, but he can shoot it, he can drive, you know, and, and I think he's a very competitive kid. I, I think he's particularly in the right setting with the right pieces around him, will be a very outstanding uh, professional athlete. All Big East first team, 23 points a game, and at Notre Dame, that was the highest since Adrian Dantley's 28.6 back in 1976. What makes him such an effective scorer? I think he can come off a screen and catch it. He catches it in transition well. Um, I think what he's going to have to do, though, is develop a low post game. I question about his ability to defend a three, and then as a four, I think he's a little bit light and not strong enough down there. I tell you, he's a willing worker. He's a great kid. We had him over in Australia, too. And uh, he's very, very bright. So I think if you're bright and you're a good worker, if he hits the weight room, he's got a chance to be good. I don't believe there's anybody in the room you haven't coached or coached against <laughs> or been beaten by. I'm telling you, you know everybody. With the 20th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Roshan McLeod from Duke University. With the 21st pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Ricky Davis from the University of Iowa. With the 22nd pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Brian Skinner from Baylor University. With the 23rd pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select Teron Liu from the University of Nebraska. With the 24th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Felipe Lopez from St. John's University. With the 25th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Indiana Pacers select Al Harrington from St. Patrick's High School in Elizabeth, New Jersey. With the 26th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Sam Jacobson from the University of Minnesota. With the 27th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Seattle Supersonics select Vladimir Stepanya from Ljubljana, Slovenia. With the 28th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls select Corey Benjamin from Oregon State University. With the 29th pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Utah Jazz select Nazi Mohammed from the University of Kentucky. See the Celtics' Antoine Walker, former Kentucky Wildcat, teammate of Nazi Muhammad, there to give him a pat on the back. Richard Lewis, the high schooler out of Texas. The Lone Ranger now in the green room as he waits for his name to be called, and it was a long wait for Nazi Muhammad. The 29th and final pick of the first round going to the Utah Jazz. First team all SEC. And you be your take on what he will bring to Utah. Well, first of all, Utah, 12 players deep. Only one free agent, Antoine Carr. So you know it's an experienced ball club. Uh, now, he brings to the table a great work ethic. When you think that he left high school at over 310 pounds and lost 75 pounds to make the all-SEC first team and then to play at the level that he did, 
and get his team to the national championship. This young guy possesses a lot of tools. He could not be going to a better organization to learn his trade. And then on a daily basis, you have Foster and Ostertag to work out against. 